It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of the Pan Game Elite Podcast. Now, what we're about to cover today really should be the biggest story in the music industry right now. Taylor Swift, number one, she's proving that she's, if not the biggest artist, one of the biggest artists, and she's doing it without a lot of publicity, without a lot of help from the urban community because a lot of people feel like she's overrated. A lot of times we are the ones that are contributing to the artist becoming very popular. She's doing it without us, right? So I know a lot of black publications, a lot of black channels are not going to cover this, but what Taylor Swift is doing in the music industry, honestly, is very groundbreaking. She's been fighting against the major labels and the powers that be for the better part of about eight to 10 years, right? Remember, Taylor Swift was the first or one of the first artists to actually go toe to toe with Spotify. At one point, she pulled her music completely off the platform and said, if y'all don't get this shit together, y'all don't get my label right with the money situation. I'll be selling my shit by myself on my own website. We won't come back. They had to renegotiate some things and get her to come back and play ball. A few years ago, she had a bout with her former record label, Big Machine. When they got sold, she wanted to buy her masters back for whatever reason. They reneged on the deal and let another company, Scooter Bronze Company, buy her masters before she could get to it. She had her lawyers comb through all of her contract details and they found a provision in the contract that says after seven years, she will be able to re-record all of her masters and re-release it. So she decided she was going to hit the studio and do just that. It took a little bit longer than seven years in order for her to actually get these projects out, but she's been re-releasing her catalog for about a year now. Now she just released her new project, 1989, which of course is a re-release of her iconic project that put her all the way out of here with Kendrick Lamar features, all this other stuff. And this album literally just broke records. Remember, this is old music re-recorded and it's breaking records as if it's brand new. What record did she break? I got you. Taylor Swift breaks Spotify record for most streamed album in a single day with 1989 Taylor's version. And her release last year, Midnight's, previously held the record. So she's going back to back. No Drake. Not only was the album the most streamed in a single day, but she also became the most streamed artist in a single day with this new release. The project features newly recorded versions of all 13 songs on the original, plus three new bonus tracks. Not to mention five other songs from her personal catalog from The Vault, as she's calling it. So that rounds it out at what? 20 songs in total, 13 from the original, and another five that the fans didn't necessarily hear before. As an artist with an extensive catalog, this will not even be Taylor Swift's last re-recording that she's going to drop. She still has two more Taylor versions that she's going to drop. She's got her project Fearless and Red. Red actually came out in 2021 and she's already about to drop another version of it because the label did not want to be fair with her. We haven't seen an artist buck the system to this level since Prince. And again, Taylor doesn't get a lot of credit because she's a white girl. They feel like she's got white privilege. A lot of people in the urban community, like I said, we don't listen to her music. You don't hear her bumping out of people's cars like that when, you up to, when you're going up the street. You ain't never seen a goddamn big heavy Chevy bumping Taylor Swift on the interstate. So you don't think she has much influence. But I'm here to tell you that is getting debunked. Now, I want to do a quick breakdown of everything that's happening, because I said Taylor is causing major changes within the industry off of these re-releases, so much so that the record labels are now about to start restructuring artist contracts so that this never happens again. This is the big story. According to an article that was just released on Billboard Pro, this is what's happening right now. The lawyers are negotiating behind the scenes, trying to figure out how they can stop artists ever being able to make this type of move. They say while Taylor Swift has been racking up billions of streams with updated Taylor version re-recordings of her original hits over the past couple of years, making cultural moments out of old material and simultaneously driving down the value of those original recordings, basically saying her fans are no longer listening to those old versions of her albums. They're coming out and actively supporting the new version because they actively support the artists. I'll keep going. Record companies have been working to prohibit this sort of thing from happening again. The major labels, Universal Music Group, Sony Music Entertainment, and Warner Music Group have recently overhauled contracts for new signees, according to top music attorneys. Some demanding artists wait an unprecedented 10 years. 
15 or even 30 years to re-record their releases after departing from the record companies. There's an attorney by the name of Josh Karp. He says, the first time I saw it, I tried to get rid of it entirely. He said, I was just like, what is this? This is strange. Why would we agree to further restrictions than we've agreed in the past with the same label? So attorneys that are working on the behalf of artists are baffled and they're not understanding why this is happening. And it doesn't make any sense because why would we go further into slavery when we're trying to become more and more independent as time goes by? The labels are losing their grasp and now they're grasping at straws. Let's continue the article for decades. Standard major label recording contracts stated artists had to wait for the latter of two periods to expire before they could put out re-recorded versions. Swift style. It could have been five to seven years from the release date of the original or two years after the contract expired. Today, attorneys are receiving label contracts that expand that period to 10, 15 years or more, as I just stated. And the attorneys are pushing back. It becomes one of a multitude of items you're fighting. I recently did a deal with a very big indie that had a 30 year re-record restriction in it. God damn. Which obviously is much longer than I'm used to seeing. This is an attorney by the name of Gandar Severe. He says, I think the majors are also trying to expand their re-record restrictions, but in a more measured way. They are generally not yet able to get away with making such extreme changes. OK, they say until June of 2019, when Swift announced she would re-record her first six albums, the concept of drawing fans to new versions of old songs was a music business niche, meaning not many people had tried it. I remember Cameron talking about this years ago, saying that he was going to re-record the masters to his old music and put it out we've never actually seen or heard those records come to materialization we've also seen ashanti have her issues with irv Gotti, murder inc she said she was going to re-record her old albums i think she put out two or three albums under their under their label we still haven't seen the first one drop irv Gotti has been resisting any type of assistance for her he does not want her to eat She's tried to figure out how to go through him, around him, et cetera. We just haven't seen it come to life and we're not, and I'm not sure if we're actually going to see it despite the fact that they've been trying. I would love to though, because I am pro artist, right? They say Frank Sinatra re-recorded a number of his biggest hits in the 60s, but in recent years, new Def Leppard and Squeeze versions had minimal commercial success, meaning that they didn't work. But after venture capitalist and longtime Justin Bieber manager Scooter Braun purchased Swift's original label, as I stated, Big Machine Music Group, she failed to reobtain her original master recordings. The business transaction was personal to Swift. She had accused Braun of incessant manipulative bullying, and she encouraged her huge fan base and sympathetic radio programmers to exclusively play new Taylor's versions of Fearless Red and others. Right. So she's telling the the fans the radio stations, anybody that plays her music, anyone that had her music in rotation to switch it over to her version so that she can eat off of it. So that some big conglomerate evil record label, as she was painting them out to be, would not profit off of her work. Suddenly, the concept of re-recording masters has evolved from an archaic fine print buried in, re in record deals to a widely scrutinized sauce celebrity. Obviously, this is a big headline topic, the Taylor Swift thing. Labels, of course, are going to want to do whatever they can to address that and to prevent it. But there's only so much they can do. Artist representatives are going to push back against that. And certain standard is ingrained in our industry that is not easy to move away from. Another music attorney by the name of Dina Lapote says now because all of this taylor swift ish we have an even new negotiation it's awful we're seeing a lot of perpetuity ish perpetuity means for the rest of time you know what i'm saying for the foreseeable and the unforeseeable future forever they're gonna own your shit so much so they even say in this universe or others that come into existence these contracts ain't no hope. When we were negotiating deals with lawyers before we would get the proposal, we'd get the phone call from the head of business affairs. We literally would say, if you send that to me, it will be on effing Twitter in 10 minutes. It never showed up. Swift has her own reasons. In addition to dominating the charts and racking up millions of dollars in streaming revenue for emphasizing her re-recordings, smaller artists have more modest goals. Alternative rock band Switchfoot recently put out an hour version of their 2003 album, The Beautiful Letdown. They say for everyone who supported us over the last 23 years, for everyone who sung along with these songs, right? 
They put it out for their people because, again, if the label is putting you in a situation where you only get 10 percent, 15 percent, maybe 20 percent at the max of your royalties for music, you put your hard work into. You go out here and perform every night. Some of these artists perform hundreds of shows every year, busting their ass with no health insurance or limited health insurance. So many of these artists have died in old age with little to nothing to their name. Some a lot of these artists nowadays are trying to sell what they own of their catalogs. Right. Just so that they can make ends meet or have anything to leave to their family, their children. Artists are trying to figure this stuff out. Let's continue. They say after superstar pop and R&B trio TLC negotiated a separation agreement from its label Sony Music in the early 2000s. Bill Diggins, the band's manager, negotiated a re-recording clause allowing the group to use such hits as Waterfalls and no scrubs for TV and movie syncs. Anytime you negotiate with a label, it's a difficult proposition, he said. A UMG spokesperson said the label does not comment on legal agreements and pointed to the Wall Street Journal article reporting that the company made such changes to contracts prior to Swift doing her re-recording. So they're basically saying we're not doing this because of her. We were already trying to get this in order. Of course, before Taylor Swift did it, I saw Cameron talking about it on Drink Champs. So... Once he said what he said, I think a lot of people went up in arms that were in the industry because that was also a big topic. It didn't permeate like it does today because YouTube, the content game wasn't as bountiful as it is today. The information wasn't as readily available on how to do these things. So now the consciousness has changed. So now they're making sure that this shit gets done. Reps for Warner and Sony did not respond to requests for comment, but some music attorneys are sympathetic to labels concerns about these re-recordings. They say, although the contracts have gotten reasonably artist friendly over time, longtime music attorney Donald Passman said recently, they don't want you to duplicate your recordings like ever. And then they will limit the other types of recordings you can do. Now, Donald Passman has that book. All you need to know about the music business, right? He's revised this book probably 20 times over the last 30 something years. So he definitely would know. And he says not only will they start limiting what you can duplicate, but they're also going to limit what other types of recordings you can do. That will be the next change. They're going to control everything that you can do so that you're not able to buck the system so that you're not able to operate outside of anything that they put in that contract. So the 360 is probably about to get elevated into a 720 or a 1080 at this point. But a lot of people expected this to happen anyway. Josh Binder, who's an attorney who represents SZA, Gunna, Dochi, Marshmallow, and others, they say that the Taylor Swift scenario is rare and most artists never have to exercise their re-recording rights. It doesn't offend me so much. Rarely does it come into play where the re-record treatment is even used. The label's position is, hey, if we're going to spend a bunch of money creating this brand with you, then you should not try and create records to compete with us. We try and fight it. We try and make it as short as possible, but I don't find it to be the most compelling issue to fight. Now, when somebody says this and you're an attorney that works on behalf of some of the biggest artists in the game, not to mention some of the rising artists in the game, I have to ask what your intentions are, right? When you put out a statement like this to say, you don't think this is something worth fighting. You don't think that this is something that would be pertinent or relevant. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of instances of this being needed or being important or people being ballsy enough to try it. But that doesn't mean moving forward that this won't be a good tool for other artists. I don't know. That's just a major red flag for me, especially coming from an attorney that's supposed to be on the artist side. I don't know. Moving forward, they say once artists get past the weeds of re-recording restrictions, Binder says... The bigger issue is controlling their master recordings. That was Swift's primary concern in putting out her new versions after Braun purchased her catalog from Big Machine. Artists and their attorneys have recently moved towards licensing deals, retaining ownership of their masters and signing with labels to distribute music for a limited period rather than traditional recording contracts where the label owns everything. That is true now, because if you could go in retaining ownership of your masters then you won't have to go back and re-record your shit so i do understand where they're coming from now i was a little i was a little shaky there but you redeemed yourself at the last second doing these licensing deals basically says that you can give your music to a label you sign a contract and say i'm gonna bring the music to you i'm gonna make sure everything is good you pay me right up front and you're gonna get access to my music for the next five to seven years you can put it out. You can put it in syncs. You can do whatever. We have a certain profit sharing split that we're going to do. But once this contract is done, I keep ownership of my shit, which means you don't have to re-record it. And all of the future royalties revert back to you. I think that's a very valid way of doing things as well. 
However, Ben McLean, an attorney who has worked with dozens of artists from Donovan and DMX, I did notice that uh, Rough Riders Anthem got some re-recordings that I don't like. Like they fucked them, they fuck with the beat. I ain't like that shit, but keep going. To new label signings such as the Tox Hards and the We the Commas, he says traditional deals remain more common than licensing deals, so battles over new re-recording restrictions still come up. Thank you for the opposing perspective. He says, I always ask for less. Some labels at a negotiating point might be fine with it. It always depends on what your leverage is. He says, if you're an unknown artist and you really need the deal, the label doesn't have a lot of motivation to give in on things like that. They're strict, right? So if you're an unknown artist, nobody knows you. You don't have a lot of asking power. You can't go in there and demand all of the terms in the contract because who are you? That's how they treat you. That's why so many artists like Kanye and others have had amendments made to their contracts because they went in with a certain contract. After a certain point, you cash out, you know, you make X amount of money for the label. You have all this success and you say, hey, I want some things changed, renegotiated. They do that. You give you an amendment. I think his his contract was amended like 10 times over like a 15 year period or something crazy. But had he been able to go in there and own his music outright from the beginning, he wouldn't have had to ask for nothing. But each time they did those amendments, it probably came with a check for Kanye. What exactly does all of this mean? In short, the labels are closing the walls in on their artists, especially the ones that have signed recently. If there was some sort of reversion situation or some sort of re-record clause, they're stating that if it was five to seven years in the past, they're extending it out to 10, 15, maybe even 30 years before you could go in the studio, re-record it and own those recordings outright. Plus, they're not trying to give up master ownership because like I just stated, if you don't have a lot of leverage, if you don't have independent success with sales history, um, selling out shows on your own before you sign with the label, they're not going to give you access to your masters. They might even take some of your publishing like it could get tricky out here. The less powerful you are and the less history you have. If you're just a buzzing artist off TikTok, you're not going to get a favorable deal. It's just the way it is. And all of this is happening because this Taylor Swift album is damn near outperforming the original version. And this has happened for like two, three albums of her career already. Like she's been doing this for a couple years and each one continues to break records. So she's showing you I can recut the product and put it out and the shit still going to sell. She's selling dope on these niggas, man. So why y'all not supporting Taylor? Y'all be making jokes about her, how she dress on tour, how she dance on tour. Y'all making these funny comparisons to her and Beyonce. I'm not here for none of that. I ain't laughing at none of that. And I'm not discrediting anything that she's doing because she's literally showing artists that she could go against the system. She could go against the labels, go against the major platforms. And she's come out on top every time. Now, of course, that doesn't mean everybody's going to win or that everybody's wins will look the same. Same, but it at least lets you know the possibilities It at least lets you know if you're able to go in and study your contract, get with people that are working on your behalf, legal professionals that are working for you, not secretly working with the label too. You might be able to come out on top, live a good life and put out the music that you really love. That shit is hella inspiring for me. I don't know about y'all. And to be honest, to see these white owned record labels go against one of their own, it lets you know how much of a stronghold they want to have on the industry. Normally you hear about black artists getting suppressed, getting stomped out, getting the short end of the stick, not getting uh, ownership of their music. So now we see one of the biggest white artists in the world. And even she had to come back and reload the clip on these motherfuckers, man. I'm not anti-industry. I'm not anti-label, but I am pro artist at all times. So whatever it takes, there needs to be some sort of meeting at the table for the labels. I mean, they've made billions upon billions upon billions of dollars for decades, right? Yes, you're not making as much money as you used to, or at least that's what y'all say, because the numbers are going up every year. Sales are going up every year. Profits are going up, but y'all payouts seem to be decreasing. Something's not adding up. Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow the Pen Game Elite podcast playlist so that you get all updates on future episodes. You're definitely going to want to stay tuned. Like I said on the other episode, we're going to start getting actual artists and music industry professionals on the channel to talk about some of these things going on. So definitely stay locked in with me, man. If this is what you're more interested in, 
definitely make sure that you get to that playlist. For all artists out there, if you don't have any management, any guidance, anyone helping you along the way in your career, you're definitely going to want to check out my website, www.pengameelite.com. It's down below in the description. I got two books on there called The Pen Game Portfolio, Volume 1 and 2, that teaches you how to build a music-based business, to learn the terminology of the industry, to learn how to move in the modern music industry as an independent artist with maybe no help teaching you different ways to make money as an artist, start putting out artist-based services so others can pay you for your skills while you're trying to figure out how to get your next hit or your first hit, how to get your music in TV and film. I've done that for a long time. I've got over 200 TV shows and movie placements. I've been on NBA 2K22, Kevin Hart's Zero Fs on Netflix, Lizzo's uh, Watch Out for the Big Girls on Prime Video, All American, more than I could even name in this one city, man. It's ridiculous, but... That's another chamber of my education. I've got a course called Paid to Play that teaches you specifically how to do that. It's all on pengameelite.com. Just check it out, all right? Much love and respect. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Yeah. King of my city and code of sack. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier rat. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gouda. We hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, so straight out the sewer. We come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. I was ready for years and they doubted me All of a sudden they tell me they proud of me I've been dropping these haters like calories Cross my mind, I came back with some battery Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner Packing a stick with a drummer Wanna catch my bad one from I done came too far to be hump New day, let's get it Big chain, let's get it More fame, let's get it No shame, let's get it New day, let's get it Big chain, let's get it More fame, let's get it No shame, let's get it I got em, get checked, no problem Motivate like Wilo, chick gon' follow